Hey, it's Miss Adams from Flamingo Math. We're in day two on lesson four, talking about polynomial functions and rates of change. Today, we're gonna look at turning points, relative and absolute extrema, and describing relationships of those extrema for even and odd point functions. And finally, looking at points of inflection. We talked about that in the first lesson. So a function f is said to be concave up on an open interval if the graph looks like a u or part of a smile. We could say concave up here. And a function f is concave down on an interval if the graph looks like an upside down u or maybe part of a frown. We want to shade the graph in green where we are concave up, so concave up in green. And somewhere in here, it's gonna turn and become concave down. Shade that in green. We're gonna shade in blue for concave down. So somewhere over here, we're concave down. And our point of inflection, we actually know the point of inflection because I've done the calculus part on that. The point of inflection is right here, and it's the ordered pair 1 half, negative 1. This is called the point of inflection. Where the graph turns from being concave up to concave down, or vice versa and they want to draw the estimate in red, I put it in black. So we'll just color over that in red. Now we don't do this, we won't have to do this on the AP exam, but you can calculate the average between the minimum and the maximum values. So if I took the X values and found the average, that would give me the X coordinate. And then likewise for the y values, add the y values and cut that in half, take the average, that would be my y value. We did that by finding the average between the minimum and the maximum values. And like I said, you won't be asked to do that on the AP exam. On example seven, can we determine how many points of inflection occur in the graph below? We want to label the appropriate location of each point on the graph. So it looks like there are three turning points. The graph turns here, and the graph turns here, and the graph turns here. So we've got three turning points which means we would have two points of inflection. So we got two points of inflection. And we want to label the location of those. So we've got a turn here. This is turn number one. And this is turn number two. And this would be turn number three. So somewhere in here would be a point of inflection. And then maybe halfway over here, we would have another point of inflection. So these two, and I'm gonna abbreviate on my graph as point of inflection. We've seen an example like this in an earlier lesson where we try to put all the concepts together that we've learned so far. In this example eight for the function, we've got g of x over here. We wanna identify the characteristics and known values for g are shown in this table over here. So it's a polynomial function. That means our domain is all real numbers. So all reals. And you got to be careful, the range is going to go from this low value here, which looks like it's being given to us on the table. So the lowest value of the range, the y value, is negative 8.1, and it goes up to infinity. 
and the type of the function, the degree would be a fourth degree. And I don't know if you know from Algebra 2 or not, you can name that verbally as a quartic function. The zeros and their multiplicity, again, this is back from Algebra 2. I've got a zero at negative 5, a zero at negative 2, and a zero at positive 2. And what do you recall from Algebra when the graph crossed the x-axis or touched and turned away from the x-axis. Recall that meant you had multiplicity two if it touched, behaved like a parabola in that case. So the zeros, we have x equals negative five, multiplicity one, x equals two, multiplicity one, but x equals negative 2, we had multiplicity 2 or multiplicity even. Part E, what are the intervals where g of x increases? So back up to look at the graph. Our function would be increasing in here and increasing here. So it looks like, I don't know, negative 4, starting at negative 4 to negative 2, the function increases. And then it also is increasing from 0 0.9, so 9 tenths, to infinity. <clears throat> then decreasing, negative infinity over to negative 4, that's a low spot, and it's decreasing from negative 2 to 9 tenths in that section there. Where would our function have a relative maximum? So looking at this, we've got a local maximum at that zero at negative two, and the maximum value is zero. So we want to be sure we communicate that. Our relative maximum is zero, and it happens when x is negative two. And a relative minimum, so a, a local minimum, we could have a minimum here, and we could have an absolute minimum here. So I would say we have a relative minimum at negative 4, and the y value is negative 4. So the minimum, minimum is negative 4, and it happens at negative 4. You could also reason that in that area, that could be a relative minimum as well. So we could say, let's see, let's erase this a little bit. We could say we have a relative minimum at, that is negative 8.1, and that's happening at x equals 9 tenths but also this is also an absolute minimum. The absolute minimum is negative 8.1. Oh, I wrote it in the wrong spot there. Let's boot that over. The absolute minimum is negative 8.1. And our absolute maximum, we don't have an absolute maximum since it's a fourth degree the graph is unbounded upwards. So this one, we're going to put a little star by that. This absolute minimum. How many points of inflection are there, and how do you know? Well, we answered that earlier. There are two points of inflection because the graph of G has three turning points. 
and the interval where the graph is concave up. So we're going to go over here and look at the graph a minute, see if we can figure out where those points of inflection are. Let's see, maybe, maybe right there. And then maybe, I don't know, negative a half right there. So we're gonna, we're just gonna estimate those to be the points of inflection. Now, as we move through the course, we'll find that there are ways that College Board would label those for us. You wouldn't have to estimate. Intervals where g of x is concave up would go from negative infinity over to that first point of inflection, that would be negative 3. And in this case, when we're talking concavity, we always use parentheses. And I'm going to estimate that to be negative a half over to infinity. That's where the graph would be concave up. And then in between there, so from negative 3 to negative 1 half, the graph would be concave down on that interval. And once again, in this example, we want to practice that graphical reasoning like a free response type question. So in example nine, we've got the graph of a polynomial function. We want to use it to answer the following questions. First question, is the rate of change of the polynomial function increasing or decreasing at point A? Explain using graphical characteristics. So let's think about this from a slope point of view. At point A, it seems like the rate of change of P of X is decreasing since the graph of the polynomial is concave down in that section. So the rate of change of the polynomial through point A is going to be decreasing, getting less positive. And I wrote my statement and my reasoning out in a complete sentence. At point A, the rate of change of P of X is decreasing because the graph of P is concave down. We used those graphic characteristics and talked about the rate of change at that point. For part B, what is the rate of change of P of X at point B? Justify your answer using graphical characteristics. So we could say the rate of change at point B is zero because the graph of P is changing directions from increasing to decreasing. This is a turning point if you go back and look at your graph. Something like that. In part C, we want to know, could point C be considered a point of inflection? Justify your answer using your knowledge of rates of change. And we want to go back and look at that picture. So could point C be considered a point of inflection? Well, we've got, what do we know? The rate of change from B to C, right here, that's decreasing because P is concave down there. And then when you get to point C, the rate of change is going to start to increase because the graph is concave up starting at C. So it's a possible point of inflection. We would really need more information or need to know calculus in order to determine that, which is beyond our scope of our course. So we could say yes, it's possible. And then we got to put our thoughts into words. We could say something along the line, the rate of change of P of X from B to C is decreasing because P is concave down. Whoop, can't spell and talk at the same time.
can say decreasing since P is concave down. Then at point C, the rate is increasing since the graph is concave up. So something that gets that idea across, you understand the rates are increasing and decreasing and what that means as far as concavity goes. And then our last question is the rate of change at point D, positive or negative, and use some graphical characteristics to justify that. So looking at point D, the rate of change of point D is going to be positive at point D is positive because the graph is increasing here. Since the graph of P of X is increasing. So we have a positive rate of change. That's the end of lesson four.